So I may have broken my thumb recently, which really kind of sucks, but that's not gonna stop me from doing a keyboard review. Yeah, a keyboard review. Now, but hear me out. I know a lot of you guys are like, keyboards are so boring, but when Mass Drop reached out and said, hey, we wanna sponsor a video with the new control keyboard we currently have a drop on, I was like, I don't really do keyboard reviews. They talked me into it and I'm glad I did because trust me when I say this keyboard, this is premium. And this is one you're gonna wanna definitely take a look at, especially if you're any sort of a keyboard or typing elitist. Now don't let the basic packaging fool you. This is a very premium product available at Mass Drop. So if we open it up right here, we'll do a quick unboxing. Gives you some warranty information, but also all of your function keys on a quick reference card. You can leave this in your drawer, uh, wherever you would put a piece of information like this, but it gives you quick access to understand what the function keys are on the keyboard. Cause this is an RGB programmable keyboard that you control on the keyboard itself. You don't need any standalone software to make all the lighting do pretty cool RGB lighting stuff. Obviously we have our keyboard. We'll look at this in a second. You get a USB type C cable. We have this very premium aluminum or aluminum, depending on where you are, keycap puller. You also get a switch puller because the switches on here are hot swappable. They are very quick to remove in case you need to replace a switch. Quick and easy, they're not soldered in. They are simply a hot swap type, which is nice. And then you've got a couple of rubber feet right here for your keyboard, which are magnetic. So this is everything you get in the box. And let's take a look at the keyboard itself. Very minimalistic, different shades of gray, 50 of them probably. So as you can see, it's a very minimalistic design. We have a textured silver aluminum chassis on here. It's a, it's a full aluminum build, so it's very hefty. It means it's not gonna flex. It's not gonna, I, I wanna, I, my thumb is really jacked up. I'm, I wanna flex this, but I, I can't, I guess it's a good point, right? Look at all the rubber feet on the bottom right here. This is not going to slide all around. This, this is gonna hold true wherever you sit it. So it's, it's not gonna slide as you can see, but if you wanna raise it up a little bit, that is where these aluminum feet come in handy. Bam, bam. And now you've got a little bit more of an angle for your typing. Now these are kale silver switches, which I mentioned. So they're very similar to like a cherry red. They're linear press, no tactile bump, no tactile click. These have a pretty nice sound to them though, huh? I mean, if you were in an office, it's got that nice mechanical feel, but it's not clicky. A little bit of clack in there when the key press bottoms out, but not too bad. The weight, if I had to guess, is probably right around a 50 gram. Feels a lot like a 50 gram, doesn't feel too heavy to press. So let's go and talk about the switches real quick. Cause as I mentioned, these are hot swappable. So if you wanted to pull out one of the middle keys, like that's, you know, got a neighboring key, you could use the keycap puller. I'm gonna use escape cause it's easy to access. But you take your little switch puller right here, you find where the two grooves are, and then you can actually, as I mentioned, the keycaps are Cherry MX style. So if you had a favorite set of keycaps, you could use them. Mastrop also does keycaps and stuff uh, from time to time, so worth keeping an eye out. So you take the little grasper, we'll call it a grasper, you find the two grooves. It's very hard left-handed because I am a right-handed individual. And then that just pulls right out. So as you can see, these are just two contacts that press into place. It only goes one way. So if you had a key switch die on you, or if you wanted to replace your switch for whatever reason, you could actually do that without having to solder or desolder anything, making it very easy. You can also see right there inside the switch, the LED itself, because this is an RGB keyboard, as I mentioned. So to reinstall it, it's pretty simple. You just line this up with the, the two pins on the bottom. You have your center shaft, huh, ladies. Push that down, put the keycap back on, and you just replace your switch. Now let's talk about connectivity because that's a huge feature on this keyboard. You can see you have two USB type C's on either side of the keyboard. That's obviously because if you have a system on the right or on the left, you could choose which side it's on to make a more streamlined cable management path. Um, your USB type C cord is about a meter long. And as you can see, it terminates to a USB 3.0. But if we plug this in right here, you can see that that frees up the other side of the keyboard now to be a free pass-through. So you can use this to charge a USB uh, Type-C device. If you took this guy, plug this in right here. So this is a, actually a hub that we use uh, from time to time. It's got two USB 3.0s, it's got an ethernet as well as an HDMI. So we got this to actually be sort of a one piece of device that we could use to hot swap uh, a whole system onto like a laptop and be able to move it around. So you would plug this in to your laptop 
and then this would become kind of your entire pass-through. So the keyboard itself sort of becomes your dock, which is perfect for whether or not you're an on-the-go, working off of a laptop, you just wanna unplug one cable from your laptop and go, which, like I said, if you live the Apple dongle life, you're very used to that. So this device definitely works for both of those scenarios. But let's go and talk about the lighting and the actual typing experience on this, because at the end of the day, that's what matters most when it comes to a keyboard. So this is what it looks like when you first turn it on. Obviously, it's in a, an RGB rainbow demo mode, but using the card right here, we can actually control this. So let's go ahead and change the pattern here. So if we push Function and D, it goes to the next pattern. So that looks like it's just a rainbow static. Ooh, that white, or the pink and blue. It might look white on camera. That's actually more of like a peachy pink color. So we got some yellow, red, green, blue. The white looks sick. Wow. Okay, I like the white a lot. We got a little bit of a red uh, pattern going across there. There's the pattern with no other backlight on off and then back to that mode. Now we can also change the brightness uh, with W and S. So it's pretty easy to remember. Function D and A for right and left on the different modes. And then function W and S is for brightness up and down. So you see we can control the brightness. So say you have a scrolling pattern like this, you can actually increase and decrease the scrolling with uh, Q and E. So we can speed it up. How fast does it go? I think that's all of it. Whoa. It's like Knight Rider right there. So with Caps Lock, you can actually change the direction as well. So function Caps Lock, it now goes the other way. But I was a huge fan of just the solid white because that looks just so clean with all the gray and stuff right there. Um, yeah. So the same thing happens with Media Key. So function Page Up is Volume Up, Page Down is Volume Down. Um, mute, function Mute is Print. I don't know how many people use the hotkey for print. But anyway, you get the idea. You can go through the card to learn all of those other functions. You can also download software to do a more in-depth programming of like individual keys. So that's the customi customizable firmware. You just go to the website listed on the card to go and download that, and you can get much more in-depth on the keyboard itself. But you know what that means now. It is time for a typing test. And because my thumb is completely out of commission and I'm not typing too well, I'm gonna go ahead and have Phil do it. So what'd you think? All right, so let's have some final thoughts here because um, I'm not one of those people that is pretty much a keyboard snob. I can type on just about anything and I don't really think about keyboards unless they're annoying me. If something's annoying me, then I'm quick to get rid of it, move on to something else until it annoys me and then I get rid of it. I didn't find very much about this keyboard that bothers me. I mean, granted, I haven't got to spend a lot of time with it, but it, it seemed to be a pretty quick adaptation or adjustment to typing on this keyboard. I've typed on kill switches before, so that wasn't really all that weird to me. The silver switch, I think, has a nice uh, weight to it. It's about a 50 gram, that's my guess, by the way. The, you know, the full product page will tell you what the weight of the key is, I'm sure. Um, but I prefer a tactile bump, which is why I prefer cherry browns in most of my keyboards. But this didn't really seem to have a problem. There was no mispress, like it, it seemed to always register the touch. It's not like I didn't push the key down far enough. It wasn't too heavy to push down. Um, the build quality is outstanding. Metal keyboards, those are just some of the best feeling keyboards. They feel rigid, solid. There's no creaking, no flexing to them. The lighting in this being in, built into the edge of the keyboard, the edge lighting just looks fantastic. But not everything about this for me is perfect. Now let me tell you what I mean by that. I tend to be kind of picky when it comes to my keyboards. What I mean by that is most of the time I leave them flat, but every now and then, depending on my sitting position, I might want to make it raised or upright. So just lifting it up, flipping out some feet and putting it down is quick and easy. Having to dig these out of a drawer or wherever they may be stashed in the box or in a closet or whatever would be kind of an annoyance to go, okay, I wanna set this up, have to get them out, you know, go on there, lift it up, line it up, stick it on there. And there we go. So having some sort of a cubby or a recessed storage location on the keyboard itself would have been nice. There's plenty of room on the back where they could have maybe made a magnetic post there to just stick them on. So then you wouldn't lose them. They're with the keyboard not being used. But my other gripe with the feet is I push my keyboard around all over my desk. My sitting position's always changing. Sometimes I'm leaning back in my chair, so I slide it forward. Sometimes I slide it off to the side because I'm sitting sideways. And the problem is as soon as you slide these, they just roll right off because the feet are so grippy. And so what happens is they just roll over on their side and pop right off the magnet 
uh, cubby that are recessed holes that are holding onto them. And that's gonna lead to scratches all over the bottom of the keyboard or just constantly being annoying. So having a way to maybe permanently mount this with a screw or something that went right through the middle would have been a nice added touch. And the last thing I kind of want to gripe about is the actual RGB itself, not the functionality of RGB, which a lot of people look at as a gimmick, but because there's no volatile RAM on this, which means as soon as it loses connectivity or power, then it resets to whatever the default is. So let's just say right now we unplug this from our desktop, we're plugging it into our keyboard, we're going to school or a trip or whatever. When you plug it back in, you can see it goes right back to the RGB demo mode. Now, if you're leaving this plugged in on a desktop and you're not unplugging it, then that's not gonna be a problem because the cable does receive power even when the system is in standby or shut down. It's as soon as it's completely detached that it resets like this. So if you are gonna be traveling around with it and putting it on, a, you know, on laptops and, and moving it around, this is something that you would have to deal with so it's worth mentioning. But again, kind of a minor gripe, depending on how you look at it, because I can go right back to the mode I was in in just a matter of seconds with the function key. So there is that. So anyway, we're gonna go guys. Thanks for watching. If you wanna know more about this keyboard, look at the description below. You will find a link to MassDrop. They have sold over 2000 of these. It's a very popular keyboard that they are constantly being asked to bring on sale. So check out the description below. You guys can learn more about it. And again, a huge thank you to MassDrop for sponsoring today's video. I told them I don't like keyboards and stuff. Uh, I don't really like doing videos on them, but this one pleasantly surprised me. It's an 80% keyboard or 10 keyless keyboard that I would have no problems running as a daily driver. All right, I'm gonna go. Thanks for watching. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. And as always, I will see you in the next one.